I'm featuring the game between Hikaru Nakamura and Gatikamski from round two of the Sinkfield Cup in St. Louis. Of course, these are the top two American players, and there's a great rivalry between them. They often have really hard battles, and today was no exception. So let's see what happened. Nakamura opened with the white pieces. E4, and Kamsky shows that he's up for a fight playing the Sicilian defence. And it went into an open Sicilian and the Khan variation. Well, this is already quite double-edged because black advances on the queen side and you can see neglects his development on the king side, whereas white is actually developing very, very rapidly. And well, black's queen side development, yep, very fine indeed. And I do like this bishop on c6, but this is a problem. And, well, personally, I already like white's position very much. It's so much easier to play white here. Black already has to be quite careful. For example, if you play a natural move like knight f6, then white can just advance and play knight e4 and already has a nice attacking position. Um, and if bishop c5, or then queen h5, then white's pieces just flood out very, very quickly. Kavsky played queen b8, which has been played before. It looks rather bizarre. The idea is to try and play the bishop to d6. But it's very slow indeed. And black's queen is miles from the king's side. Now, knight d5, this look already looks absolutely terrifying, but, well, with careful play, black is actually okay. Of course, it would be very foolish to take this knight, opening up the e-file. This is no sacrifice at all. White isn't giving up material. Bishop d6 played. Threatening a pawn, which is covered by the queen. Um, White's piece is flooding out. Looks very dangerous indeed for black. But Kamsky's position is solid enough, and with this move, he manages to trade some pieces. But it's still much easier for white to play this position than black. For example, here, if castles and bishop b2, you can see that white is ready to attack on the king side. Well, there are the bishops, but perhaps joined by a rook as well. I mean, it's very difficult indeed. So, um, black has to wait with his king for the moment. And Kamsky plays a5. Now, positionally, an important move, because actually white would like to play a5 here and perhaps create a target out of that a6 pawn. But it seems so casual when black sting, black's king is still in the middle. And now, well, again, castling is inadvisable. So bishop f6 played by Kamsky. A compromise, shattering his pawns. But actually, these pawns in the middle are potentially very strong indeed. If the queens were exchanged here, then I prefer black. Because... Although it took a long time, uh, it was while and, and, and Black neglected his kingside development. In fact, from a positional point of view, this pawn advance on the queen side is very nice for Black because these two pawns control these three pawns. Typical Sicilian strategy. So a queen exchange would be nice for Black, but White isn't going to uh, agree to that. And in the meantime, black's king is in the middle of the board and breaks the communication between black's heavy pieces here. So that's black's challenge. Can he survive white's onslaught in the middle of the board? e5 is a very dangerous move indeed. Obviously, if this is taken, then the rook comes up the board. And there are all kinds of threats, not just to the king, but on the queen side as well. If f5 seems like a sensible move to close the position, I'm sure Kamsky was fearful of this move, this sacrifice, 
and e6. Well, black might be able to survive with careful play, but this is very unpleasant indeed. For example, here, and now you have a choice of taking either pawn and, well, I wouldn't like to defend this with black. Not easy. So, Kamsky played rook g8, counterattacking on the g-file, and then played rook g5. <clears throat> now, queen h6. So, Kamsky took this pawn in the centre, but you can see that White's queen is very active indeed. And if rook takes rook, <clears throat> then all White's pieces are in play. He's no material down, and this is clearly best for White. You know, this pawn is hanging. Black's king looks in a real mess. So Kamsky played rook h5, which at first glance looks ludicrous. Yeah, this rook looks very oddly placed at the side of the board, but it does protect that h pawn. And actually, white can't exploit the strange position of that rook. For example, if bishop e2, now this is exactly what black wants, because then you can force an exchange of queens. And in this position, suddenly black is better. This bishop is superb on c6. He has these wonderful central pawns backed up by the king. Black stands better. So white still has to be very careful here. And in particular, that bishop is a tremendous piece raking across white's king. So I'm not surprised that <clears throat> Nakamura chose bishop e4. And now, good move from Kamsky. He has to get rid of white's queen. Again, the queen trade will be highly desirable for black. This kind of position, black already stands better. This is a weak pawn. Black controls the open file. Better for black. So the queen came back. And now the rook is still okay. And actually is able to put pressure on the pawn on c2. And now here was a remarkable moment. Nakamura took this pawn on h7. It's a really brave move. If he wanted to play more quietly, he could have exchanged bishops. But taking on h7, h7 is extraordinary because after Kamsky's next move, that bishop is out of play for some time. And this bishop on c6 is a beautiful piece cutting across the board. And black's pawns don't look bad either. Now, the only problem is that Black's king is sort of floating around the middle and on the queen side. But still, I thought this was a really brave decision from Nakamura to play like this. OK, there's a pawn threatened on c2, so rook c1, now king c7. So suddenly there's a chance sometimes for this rook to come across, come across the board. Perhaps not like that along here. And now... White would love to find time to play c3 to try and break open the king's, uh, the queen side towards black's king. Problem is after the exchange, now you can see that this bishop is in a very poor position indeed. Now, perhaps it's not possible to win that piece, but still, you can see in combination with this bishop, the queen is coming in, and, and this, is, this is so dangerous. So the bishop had to come out, <clears throat> and this was a key moment in the game. Kamsky chose to, to go for it, and considering that Nakamura was very short of time, I can understand why he did this. He played e5. He didn't need to do this. He could have tried, for example, queen d6 is a very interesting move, possibly threatening f4. Uh, well, there are other moves there as well, but the problem with e5 is very aggressive. He's still also trying to play f4 to get through to the king. But it does break up Black's beautiful pawn chain. And Nakamura played f4. Well, stopping Black playing f4, but also very risky because it weakens White's king. Both diagonals are now open, as well as the second rank. So a really double-edged position, and considering that Nakamura is also very short of time. Um, it's a very risky move indeed. And after this, 
Kavsky actually thought he was doing really well here. The threat is queen d5 and in. And if rook d1, then black can take here and well, he should be doing okay. But Kamsky had mi missed Nakamura's next move, which is rook f1, a very cool move indeed. So that after queen, um, if, if the queen comes to d5, then for example, this is possible. Well, one can also take on e5, but the idea is to support the pawn on f4 and bring the bishop back to f3. Kamsky took. In fact, black is still absolutely fine here, but here Kamsky was was rather thrown. He hadn't really seen rook f1. And now a very safe way to play would be to take here and play bishop b4, although black is still a pawn down. After the pawn comes to d5, it's hard to imagine that with this with this weakness on c2 that black can actually be worse in this position. But Kamsky played bishop e4, and he was hoping that white would trade, and then this is an even better version of that end game that we've just looked at, because the king supports the center, and the rook comes to c8 straight away. That would be very pleasant for black to play. But Nakamura dropped the queen back, and this came as a bit of a shock to Kamsky, and it, it threw him completely. And this move as well. Suddenly, the game is turning around. In fact, black is still fine if he finds bishop b7 threatening queen c6, and then probably white's best is just to come back and offer this endgame again, and it should be about even. But instead, Kamsky played king b7, blunder, and now Nakamura assumed the initiative. Bishop c4 was a very good move. This at first glance, this appears strong, but suddenly, bam, queen c5, great move. Nakamura had just a, a few seconds left, but calculated superbly. If pawn takes bishop, then rook d6 is a winning move. It wins the queen. Now, this is still not easy, but with black's king exposed, should be winning for white. So Kamsky defended that pawn on d5. But now white is breaking through. Still very tricky. Rook g2 mate is threatened. So here, that's the end of the road for white. But rook f2 was a very cool move indeed. And after this, then Nakamura took on d8. Rook g2 check was met by king f1. White's king is safe. But... Black's position is caving in. This pawn is a goner. And after this, they traded lots of pieces. This is completely forced. They'd reached the time control. Kamsky surveyed the position and after a few minutes resigned. It's a completely winning ending for white. For example, if rook takes b3, you take on f5. And the point is that the rook comes behind the pawn and black's king can't support it. White just pushes pawns on the king side and it's all over. There's, there's absolutely nothing that black can do. Nakamura was very cool under pressure in that game and calculated really accurately in time pressure. Great win. So he now leads the tournament with two outs two. Tomorrow he faces Carlson, his great nemesis. Let's see what happens.